legend of Aesir. A legend from the dawn of time. Nobody knows where the world came from. A struggle caused the trinity of realities to be split into three realms. Light, darkness, and chaos. Obviously, our world was the one born from chaos. The three worlds all needed rulers. Most of all, ours. And the one that ruled the chaos became known as Ace. our rules of the world, Aesir saw through reality, and those visions became our world. These observations became Aesir's power. Aesir's eyes were truly the eyes that created the world. However, Aesir pitied the humans for their naivete and lack of free will, so the power he wielded was split into two equal halves, and entrusted each to humanity's instincts. The right eye of light, and the left eye of darkness. By dividing the power of the eyes of Aesir, humans gained free will. They could now choose. With control of the eyes of the world, the eyes that determine destiny. Humans could choose their own paths. They awoke to their own identities. Man is but a reason. The most feeble thing in nature. But now, we were thinking reads. And we took our first big step towards grand prosperity. The inheritors of the eyes of Aesir have been granted the power of creation. Telling me any of your kind survived. Well, at least you're the silent type. The last sage I met spent 20 minutes rambling on and on. What? escape this fate. We will perish together. My dear sweet child, at last you have fulfilled your promise to me. Fear not, for I am always watching over you. But the right eye of light was lost from the world forever, along with its possessor, the last of the Lumen Sages.
emergencies went on, as citizens nervously clamor for answers. Our special report on the regional disasters, Major Unleashed, continues after these messages. You know what I need? Some heels without guns. You don't mind if we make a quick stop, do you? Do you know what day's coming up? Here I was shopping, minding my own business, then you show up and turn me into a damn porter. Seriously, Bayonetta, you still haven't paid me back for the car. Hey, whoa! Now, now, was that any way to speak to an old friend? Besides, I did that job for you. For free, I dad. Do I really have to tell everyone how you grabbed onto my leg, sobbing like a schoolboy? <sighs> this is why I can't have good things. You're some piece of work, you know that? If you weren't already lined up to go to Inferno, you'd be well on your way with all the shit you pull. Dressing up like a nun just so you could off some angels and keep the underworld happy. Hey, I'm talking to you. <clears throat> shit. But if it's that, I get torn limb from limb for eternity in whatever circle of inferno you witches go to if you break the contract. Forget about it. I'd off the fucking wing bastards all damn day. Oh, hey, what the hell? Hey. But what the fuck you wasting your time trying to send some schmucks off to the afterlife for? Whoa. Done and done. Let's go home, Enzo. Hey, wait a second. I ain't done here. If I don't get what I came for, I'm gonna be the biggest mutt in the city. And what is it that you came to fetch, my dear? Eh, real funny. I know better than to tell you a damn thing. I'll never hear the fucking end of know how to make an entrance, John. A rare sight to see you in the city. Just had something I had to look into. Cereza, you haven't felt anything strange recently. Now that you mention it, I still haven't quite figured out how a broke, bumbling wise guy managed to turn himself into a semi-respectable family man. Forget about it. And what's this Cereza shit? You're about as sweet as my Nona's grappa, you know that? Some witch with amnesia goes around calling herself a weapon, and it turns out she really got stuck with a kid's nickname. That shit's rich, I tell you what. Uh, our friends in Paradiso are far too quiet. I'm sure you've noticed. But they aren't the only ones. Pray tell. Our friends down south seem to be a bit upset as well. And now, now in light news, the annual holiday parade is being held today. City police have closed off roads to prepare for the massive influx of merrymakers expected to take in this year's festivities, set to be headlined by a flyover from the military's aerial acrobatics unit. Now to news, the parade may break all records. Whoa, shit! The Platinum Stars! Crap. I need to hurry up and get Ed and Edna's presents, or I'm gonna get it. We'll talk later. I'll see you back home. Don't forget to pick up the things for the party. Right now. 
That's the one. That's the biggest one you got in the store, right? Wrap it up nice, will you? It's a present for God's sakes. Yo! You know what? Screw the pretty ribbon. Just hurry up and put it in the box, will ya? try to avoid doing this in my Sunday best. Hello and welcome to Let's Play Bayonetta 2. Starting things off, I'm just going to let you know we are playing on the hardest difficulty in the game, Infinite Climax. Just using a little bit of this tutorial to get an opportunity to say that, as this first chapter is actually very, very hectic, and it will likely be difficult for me to form coherent thoughts while trying to not die. Now, going into this first fight, the only thing we have are handguns. Handguns cannot utilize Bayonetta's special moves, Wicked Weave, so all we have to rely on are our basic attacks that hit at close range, and of course we can hold the buttons to fire bullets out of the guns themselves, which puts us a little bit ahead of what we started with in the tutorial of Bayonetta 1, where you did not actually get the ability to use hold attacks until you actually completed that tutorial. And, of course, where would we be without the signature mechanic of Bayonetta? Witch Time. Witch Time is very important in Bayonetta 2, because in sharp contrast to Bayonetta 1, the hardest difficulty does not disable it, and a lot more of the combat is re revolves around using Witch Time effectively. Now, like I said, we do not have Wicked Weaves, so these guys are going to be a little tricky to take out, but not too bad. They are just... Whoop, there we go, already screwing up. Uh, these guys are just basic acceptances, so we can take them out no problem. Now, for this uh, first section of the battle, we do not get any healing items, so uh, what I do is what I do. Uh, if I screw up, uh, then I just have to start over. I'm going to do my best to get through the early chapters without any game overs, but uh, there is no guarantees with that, and I'm almost certainly going to die in this recording. I never buy anything on sale. But didn't I say it? This is why I can't have nice things. Damn it, car! Start already! Right on time to deliver a little holiday cheer. Oh, fucking wonderful! Bro, 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 Don? But I don't believe in sin! Watch your mouth, Enzo. Don't want anyone offering you for sacrilege before you pay the tax. 
And now we have Bayonetta's signature weapon for Bayonetta 2, Love is Blue. With this, we can now utilize Wicked Weaves, which Wicked Weaves in this particular fight, when they knock enemies into the air, it'll throw them off the jet and kill them. Although they'll just kind of explode to halos before they even hit the edge of the jet. Uh, we also get access to magic and the new mechanic of Bayonetta 2, Umbrin Climax, Bayonetta's sort of devil trigger mechanic. This turns every attack into a Wicked Weave, and any attack that would normally be a Wicked Weave will instead summon a demon. Demon. So yes, we can make effective use of this. Now, to compensate for this very powerful new mechanic, magic noticeably generates a lot slower in Bayonetta 2. However, you also do not lose it when getting hit, which will be pretty important for me because I get hit a lot. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get these guys taken care of. Of course, we'll utilize our Wicked Weaves. This is my preferred combo with Love is Blue. Punch, punch, then three kicks get two Wicked Weaves there. This guy is a infinite climax enemy here. Uh, normally you're just fighting a bunch of acceptances until uh, the next section of the level goes up, but in infinite climax this guy shows up to make things a little bit trickier. Now I'm not going to dwell too much on what I'm doing uh, in this uh, first fight, like the unique uh, or rather the special techniques that I'm utilizing, because uh, I am trying really hard to actually get through this without too many deaths. But uh, let's get our Umbran cli Climax here. Be sure to dodge when the demon comes up. Uh, that'll give you an opportunity to get some extra hits in with uh, the still Wicked Weavified attacks there. That I'm inventing my own words to describe things. Okay, there we go. Very rare that I actually get through that section of the fight without getting hit. Alright, coming into this next section of the fight, or rather this verse, uh, this is uh, a little bit easier than the previous section. Uh, oh, I say that and of course I get hit right away. These hammer guys, uh, I don't have all the names memorized offhand, so uh, be patient with me on that. Uh, they hit very hard, but uh, that's about all there is about them. As long as I'm paying attention, uh, I should be able to avoid their attacks easily enough. Nice thing coming up here is that now uh, these big guys actually are guaranteed to drop health. Bayonetta 2 has a system where uh, you have a last chance hit point. As long as there's a little bit of health in the bar, uh, you will uh, survive uh, any attack that gets thrown your way. However, you need to be very careful with multi-stage attacks in those cases. Alright, so I want to be very careful here because a very, very tough enemy just spawned in. Whoop. I'm going to do a little thing here I like to call Witch Time Redirect, where I let a weaker enemy uh, hit me to uh, get a... Whoop get longer witch time. Uh, Bayonetta 2 has variable amounts of witch time uh, awarded based on what enemy hits you and uh, what weapons you're using, so uh, weaker enemies give you more witch time to work with, so uh, definitely want to uh, focus on uh, dodging those attacks when you can, and you can redirect them into stronger enemies who would give you less witch time to work with, and uh, therefore do more damage during witch time. There we go. Oh, uh-oh. Woo, okay. Come on, get Umbran Climax going here. Yes, okay. 
Now, one thing about Umbrian Climax is that you cannot die while it is in effect. Uh, Bayonetta will always survive with 1 HP regardless of what she gets hit with. So that is a very nice thing right there. We just want to get that guy out of the way. And we actually uh, got the healing. All right, uh, I have been practicing this stage a ton so I can get through this without dying. Obviously, I'm nowhere near getting through this pure platinum, but uh, I was able to manage to do that without dying. This is actually my first take. No cuts here yet. Nice. Gold is okay. And here we have our first mini-boss, Belief. This guy's not too difficult, or at least not after this section of the fight. This is a little bit of an unusual fight and is a little bit tricky, but not too bad, as long as you don't get careless. There comes his leg, okay. Now, one thing that makes this uh, first stage a little bit harder than it would be normally is that I do not have access to the perfect dodge ability, Bat Within, which means certain attacks that I would be able to dodge with it are actually undodgeable, and I'll instead take damage if I attempt those. So, yeah, I gotta be mindful of that. Okay, and use the Umbrin Climax there to get some extra damage in. There is another phase to this battle that will come up after we deal enough damage. Did you get everything? <sighs> Forgot the caviar. You think they're still open? It's not Christmas without caviar. Let's finish this quickly then. All right, starting this fight out, we just want to go left. He will slam the ground. Uh, if you're far enough to the left there, uh, he will hit that uh, little uh, section on the building there, and it'll give you some health in case you took some damage in the previous uh, section of the fight. I just do want to note, since I didn't get a chance to comment on it, because everything is moving so quickly here, uh, that cutscene when he was lunging at Bayonetta, if you pressed the dodge button during that cutscene, you would uh, get witch time going into the fight, which is why I started with that. Here we'll do a punish attack, which is uh, basically a torture attack on a boss. Torture attacks still exist in this game. They are not as useful as they were in Bayonetta 1 now that uh, Umbrian Climax exists, but they still have their uses. And Bayonetta's signature demon, or well, one of them anyway, Gamora, has rebelled! And we are introduced into a new mechanic in Bayonetta 2, flying battles. Now, the, there really isn't too much to flying battles over standard combat. In fact, your combos are identical to grounded combos, but they are kind of like visual spectacles. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention there. Uh, I'm not too big a fan of them, because as you can see, they are very visually busy, so it can be very easy to take hits here, like I did just there. Oh, jeez, yeah, I might game over here. But uh, I will do my best to not do that. Now, uh, Gamora here, not an overly difficult battle, but I'm not jabbering away and I can actually focus on dodging. 
Uh, once we get him down to about half his uh, remaining HP, this is when the second phase of the fight starts, and we hit a checkpoint, so if I game over, we can just start over here. I really wish I wouldn't have to do that, but uh, it is what it is. Here, uh, the fight gets a little bit more hectic. Uh, whenever he goes around the building like that, be sure to dodge around, because uh, that means a... Woo! That means uh, his tail might be coming in for a swipe, so be careful with that. Okay, there we go. Uh, it is possible to stun Gomorrah and get a torture attack on him, and of course I died there. I really wish I didn't have to use a continue here, but it, it is what it is. Uh, I feel I feel good about the rest of this fight. Uh, I really wish I could get through this game without using continues, and there probably is going to be some item usage, but it is what it is. As you can see, now that we're past the checkpoint, we get uh, full health here, but yeah. Visually, very busy in flying battles, so it is very easy to take hits like I did. But it is what it is. I'm just glad I got through the first two sections without any game overs. Here, Gamora is stunned, so we can get our torture attack in. I'm not exactly sure what determines uh, if Gamora gets stunned or not. It doesn't seem to be tied to what damage he takes. Uh, I think hitting him with more Wicked Weaves might have an effect on it, but I'm really not sure. It just seems random, honestly. Okay, there we go. Don't give me that big toofy maw there. Very unfortunate that I game over, but uh, it is what it is. Let's uh, get the climax going here. Lumen Sage. Is revenge not all you desire? I know the one who destroyed your world. I know the one who destroyed your love. Who? Dead witches get dragged to hell. It is what it is. Jean's gonna wander Inferno suffering for eternity. Dims the brakes. I didn't ask you to tell me what I already know, Rodan. Especially if you're going to be flip about it. You know better than that. You're not the kind to let that sort of summon go out of control, Bayonetta. Something's up. The balance of powers that keep things in check don't feel right, does it? You know, she's pretty hot for a dead chick. <laughs> you wasn't a big fan of her shit when she was in the realm of the living. But looking at her now... Nah, still not a fan. She's not dead, Enzo. She's right in time. You're only really dead after your soul's been completely absorbed into another realm of the Trinity. But that's just a matter of time. Because I don't see no way of saving a soul lost in hell. What about the gates? The real gates of hell? I can't stop you from trying to use them. But I don't think you got a chance down there. I'll see what I can do about putting her on ice for a while. You need this. The heart of an Umbra Witch. The magic that keep your kind alive in this world for eternities. Should keep her body in this realm stable. But you'll need to reunite this with her soul if you're gonna try and bring her back. I figure you got about a day before it's game over. Enzo, you've got a jet, right? 
What? No. No, 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 no. I do not know. Listen, I appreciate the situation, but you know what today is? My kids got cookies baked for me at home. They're waiting for me. And I still got a place Santa tonight. Let the real Santa take care of the presents. Now let's go. Hey, I said I believe, but Ed and Edna, you can't put one over on those cute little fuckers, let me tell you. <laughs> hey, let go, let go of me. Why do I always get wrapped up in this shit? So, that is our plot for the game. The balance of Perdiso and Inferno is out of whack, and Jean has been killed in a summoning gone awry, or rather, not really killed. Her soul has been separated from her body and dragged off to hell, and we gotta get it back, or else she will truly, well and truly, will be dead. Also, Rodan is Santa. Now, because I got a continue penalty there, unfortunately our rank went from platinum, uh, which was bolstered by the pure platinum I got on the second verse, down to gold, but still much better than I was expecting. I spent a lot of time practicing this level to get the fir first section down. Uh, clearly I should have spent more time on Gamora, but that uh, fight is very weird and inconsistent with uh, whether or not Gamora gets stunned, so... I think I did well enough for this first video. For this Let's Play, what we're going to be doing is the game two or a chapter at a time, because there are plenty of cutscenes to pad out the video length, and some of the chapters, like this upcoming one, are very, very long. So, with that taken care of, I will sign off here, and I will see you in the next chapter, Noatun, the City of Genesis. And with a longer chapter that doesn't have as many fights uh, all back-to-back, -back and basically just an endless stream of combat, I'll go over more of the mechanics I'm going to be using to survive this game, as well as my general approach to uh, winning in Infinite Climax on a fresh new game, which is going to be something I'm making up on the fly, because I've only beaten this game uh, on Infinite Climax on a new game, plus previously so it's gonna be an interesting time for all as always i hope you enjoyed watching and i hope to see you in the next video until then goodbye